Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in our talks with Walt as we are calling our readings through the deathbed edition of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. We turn now to a little poem to those who have failed. This is poem number four of the 58 of Sands and 70. And we're now back to another theodicy. You'll remember that we have said that the theodicy question is the question of why must there be failure? Why must there be pain and sorrow? Here, we're going to speak directly to those who have failed. Now, our assumptions are that you've been following our stuff at LearnStrong.net, down that left-hand side, Talks with Walt, our playlist, and that you have been with us from the very beginning in inscriptions up through and including a set of introductory comments to Sands at 70, and we just finished with Montauk Point. Now, our Nortons will give us this information. It was first published in the New York Herald. You'll notice several of these poems now that we're reading at the beginning of Sands at 70 were published in the Herald of January 2, 7, 1880 with aspiration in the plural. We'll get to the word in the, uh, in the second line. Um, and then an early manuscript actually shows the title, A Laurel Wreath to Those who failed, and uh, we're going to hear that line as well and comment a little bit about laurels. Now, our, uh, our reading of this poem will take us back to the early part of Leaves of Grass, the deathbed edition. You'll remember that in this construction to those who have failed, you'll remember to foreign lands, to a historian, to the old cause, and of course it, it, it goes on to a certain country. Catchy. I mean, we've got a lot of these two and then whatever. And you'll remember in Song of Myself 18, Vivas to those who have failed. The alighted is not used uh, in the Song of Myself 18. We're going to get um, uh, at least three of these alighted constructions. That is to say, uh, notice, failed and unarmed uh, will, and possessed will all be alighted. That is to say, abbreviated. Notice that the word to gets used seven times in this poem. To those who have failed in aspiration, vast. In other words, it's not a matter of failure. It's a matter of what the aspiration was, the longing. And again, in the original, it was plural aspirations. Two, and now he's just going to start listing all of the losers who are in fact not losers. Two unnamed soldiers fallen in front on the lead. Think about uh, Emily Dickinson's classic, success is counted sweetest by those who ne'er succeed. Not one of all the uh, who took the flag today can tell so well as he defeated dying, right? Um, we're playing that game. Why? Because we're back to drum taps. We're back to all the soldiers that pass in, uh, in so many of them unnamed. And then to calm devoted engineers, again, a celebration of technologies, to over ardent travelers, obviously, the Odyssey comes to mind here, to pilots on their ships, we think of, oh, captain, my captain, to many a lofty song and picture without recognition. And again, this idea of recognition will take us back to with antecedents to, uh, till I give you recognition, he will say there. I'd, and now, after all of that too, I'd rear a laurel-covered monument. You'll remember laurel from these I sing in spring, laurel leaves, as well as O Magnet South. The idea of the laurel leaf, of course, takes us back to the Greek tradition, and this is Daphne praying for somehow surcease from being chased by Apollo, and Zeus turns her into a laurel tree, which is why, of course, we celebrate the laurels. The laurel-covered monument, high, high above the rest, to all cut off, before their time. This cut off will take us back to centenarian story. Two times it gets used in this phrasing. Cut off before their time. Possessed by some strange spirit. You hear the, the, the building of the S sounds. Some strange spirit of fire. We think, of course, immediately of Prometheus and Shelley's Prometheus Unbound. Quenched by an early death. Um, you'll remember quenched from Prowl's Music of the Storm 3. Quenched by an early death, which will immediately make us think, of course, about the fact that Whitman writes a poem like this when he himself is quite old, but he's celebrating all of those who tried and failed, especially when they were young. And the last word, of course, of the poem, death, takes us back to the last word of so long, right? Well, what exactly is it that he's arguing here at 2A? I think he's arguing as a theodicy that there really isn't any failure. As we have said repeatedly in our study of the leaves of grass, Whitman is going to challenge us when bad things happen and not ask, why did this happen to us, but rather, why did this happen for us? And I think that's his argument here. Of course, the challenge is when there's no recognition given, unnamed soldiers, he's challenging us to recognize that the world has been created by Great, great people who have often gone unnamed, no one knows, no one's given them recognition, and yet 
They're very important. They're all important. There is no failure if we fought or, cha or tried well. That's the message there. At 2B, I love the repetition of 2, 2, 2. It's almost like a mantra. At 3, we can take a, uh, think of so many texts here. Tennyson's classic Charge of the Light Brigade comes to mind. The idea that there's so often in life, and tragically in history, this case when people will uh, commit great acts of valor, and yet they go unrecognized, unnoticed. So even, of course, in Arlington, have the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier for this very reason, and those people should be honored as well. Find me at 3B, maybe a way to try and help you own this poem. Um, who do you celebrate, even though they might have lost? And to what degree do you yourself think that some of your most important successes were what? Maybe your failures. Thank you.